CompTIA ITF plus complete training course. Exam Objective 4.2 Given a scenario, use programming organizational techniques and interpret logic. Branching Up till now, we have only looked at code running line by line, from top to bottom. This is like driving down a straight road with no exits, twists, or turns. This works for the most basic of programs, but this will not allow our programs to make decisions. So how can we add decisions and variants into our programs? Well, we have a control structure for that, referred to as branching. A branching statement provides a program with a decision. While driving from one city to another, we could take a straight route down the highway, but in reality we could very likely choose from many different paths that all lead to the same destination. This is the exact idea to keep in mind as we explain this topic of branching statements. Using the power of flowcharts, I will illustrate a branching statement. As usual we will start at the top of our code. Next in the code, we encounter a branching statement. Here we are presented with a decision in the program as denoted by the diamond-shaped symbol. This flowchart displays a decision having two possible options. Option 1 would result in output 1. While option 2 would result in output 2. And regardless of which decision is made, both branches will eventually merge back together and continue with any remaining code statements or in our case, reach the end of the program. Now I am going to zoom in on the decision portion of this branching statement. When we reach a branching statement, our program will of course have a decision to make. But how does a computer program make a decision? Well, that is the next piece in this puzzle. A branching statement will use a condition statement to aid in the decision-making process. A condition statement will present a true or false scenario. For our example, I am using the condition statement if num is greater than 2. With this statement, we will be looking at the num variable and checking whether it is greater than 2. Now, should the variable num have a current value of 10, the conditional statement would evaluate to true, as 10 is greater than 2. This would result in our code displaying output 1. But, if the current value of num was 1, the conditional statement would evaluate to false, as 1 is not greater than 2. This would result in our code displaying output 2. Hopefully you now understand the concept of branching statements and the conditional statements that drive them. Now it is time for some more terminology. Next we will take these concepts and apply them to coding directly. In most programming languages, a decision with two branches is often called an if-else statement. With this code arrangement, if the conditional statement evaluates to true, then the first branch, which would be the if branch, will execute. Otherwise, if the conditional statement evaluates to false, the second branch, which would be the else branch, will execute. Or to put it another way, the else branch acts as a catch-all for any scenario where the if statement is not found to be true. To wrap up this video, let's take a look at an if-else branch using some pseudocode and walk you through the code line by line. For our example, we will have some fun and pretend we are working with some military security clearance levels. First up let's take an input for the user variable. Our input will be general. In receiving this input, our user variable becomes equal to general and is stored in memory. Next we see on line 2, if, and on line 4, else. These are our two possible branches. You will start with the if statement and see whether or not the condition evaluates to true. Since user does indeed equal general, our condition is true and we will execute the indented line of code. This line of code declares a variable with the identifier of clearance and assigns it the value of top secret. Now this next piece is very important. Because our if branch was selected, we will now skip over lines 4 and 5, which includes the else branch and the code indented underneath it. Just as you can only take one path on the highway each time you go from one place to another. You only execute one path in a branching statement each time it is encountered in the code. Once we have concluded with the branching statement, we pick up on the very next line of code and continue on. As for this last line of code, the program is directed to print or output the value currently stored within the variable clearance, which happens to be top secret. Great job for making it this far. In the next video, we will build upon this concept and see how we can add additional branches. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.